Now, I wanted to know, yeah. how did you f- get to become the host of Figure Out in the first place? They, so at that time, um, I had hosted a show on MTV. I had uh, mm-hmm. done a, ver- a few various other television jobs, random jobs. Um, and my agent said, hey, they're looking for a host for this, and they're thinking they want a female. So I sent in um, my audition tape, and it was, you know, this is the late 90s. I don't even know if you can remember that. Yeah, well. but it was literally like old school video camera, giant video camera that you lug up on your shoulder. And my dad set it up with a tripod and mm-hmm. happened to be at home um, visiting. So he set it up on a tripod, and, and my dad played the kid. Uh, for my audition tape and the funny thing is at the time he smoked and he doesn't anymore but he would not put his cigarette out to the audition tape I think he was like you're not going to get this so um, that was my audition tape my my grown father playing a kid smoking a cigarette and I have no idea why but they called me back I ended up going into New York for an actual audition where I had to run through the show in what seemed like sort of a cafeteria, kind of a, a room. Um, and then, I, you know, I probably didn't hear back from them for a good month, which was really hard for me as an athlete who's used to touching the wall and immediately look and see your results. Um, so the month was just torture, and then they said, you got the job. Got the job. I'm sure you were pretty excited over the moon, and you got to the first thing of filming, going down to the Nickelodeon Studios in Florida. What was your first impression of the place? Oh, I loved it. Um, what was so fun is that it was, um, you know, it was the heyday of Nickelodeon. I do think it was this really special decade of Nickelodeon, and they ruled children's television. They understood kids and um, how particular kids were and all the adjectives they used about shows that were popular. And um, I mean, there were so many elements that they understood and studied about kids. And I found, I just, I admired that. Uh, So then to go down to the studios and see how Nickelodeon was actually part of the tour down there. So kids would come by and they could see our show. They they would come by and they'd watch us in hair and makeup. Mm. So even, you know, imagine if we're shooting four shows a day, um, people are getting slimed four times, well, eight times a day because, you know, twice in one show they could get slimed. Um, So they're coming through and, and every time we have to put together a new show they'd be showering you know washing the hair out and then redoing the hair and makeup so there was this whole process where all the kids got to see and I just thought it was so cool that I felt like anybody who was at Universal Studios was a part of our show we had a live studio audience they were very patient um, and, and enjoyed the process and of course the panelists in Danny Tamborelli in particular and his dog pound and anytime he got slimed he would flick his hair back and everybody behind him would get some slime on him the whole, the whole thing was really fun the family uh, the family aspect of it I really appreciated exactly the whole thing was so family oriented and I've got to visit there fortunately as a kid and you're like you said going down to Universal Studios with your families and stuff and seeing it's always about them having park visitors to come visit the show that was the most that was just a plus on a side to that and another thing yeah. too, like you said um, four shows a day so can you explain how that worked a typical day of filming yeah it was it was between three to four shows a day maybe there was one day maybe the first day of filming we do two shows just to try to get our feet wet and back into the groove of things um, so I'll tell you this is how interesting it was my very first day on set where we were rehearsing so it was just rehearsal the very first um, season of the show uh, and it was in February down in Orlando and so we're doing all the rehearsals and stuff like that and I had learned that my sister-in-law was in labor uh, mm-hmm. with her and my brother's first child so it was the first nephew or niece that I was going to have and they didn't find out what it, what it was going to be so I remember the day of my first rehearsal, it was February 13th, because my, my nephew, who is now 18, mm. was born that day. And in between rehearsal, I kept running back and calling them saying, is there any baby yet? Is there any baby yet? 
Um, so writer at 18, February 13th, so it was kind of my first day on set. Um, we would shoot, once we got rolling with our shows, we would shoot three to four shows a day. Um, and there were two contestants each show. So you have to remember one whole show, the scene can get as messy as we want it to get. People don't have to get cleaned up. Um, maybe the crew would clean up the floor a little bit if there was some messy clues that we had thrown out. But for the most part, it needed to remain uh, somewhat messy. And then uh, there was a chance that the same person got slimed. Um, for each uh, contestant in the secret slime action. But once the show was done and we got to highlight each of the kids' talents or inventions or collections or wild, crazy, whatever, um, we would we'd clean up the whole set and it had to look fresh like nothing had happened and it was our very first show of the day. So the hard part about that was your fourth show of the day had to have as much ener energy and excitement as your first show of the day. Um, and I have to say, the family there, everybody working behind the scenes, up in the control room, on set, we all just sort of carried each other. It was very fun. And it, the catalyst of it all was the contestant because these sweet, awesome kids would fly through there and this was their big moment, you know? They loved to figure it out and they were so excited to play the game and see if they could win who was going to get slimed on their half of the show uh, and then you know they wanted to show their talent and we wanted to celebrate them right right that's right. that's so special about your nephew being born on february 13th and another thing that's so interesting is that the four shows i always wonder because jay um i spoke to him about this not too long ago about you saying that there are certain episodes i see that you wear the same clothes but at the same time the same clothes that you wear there are different panelists on the show so we're different type of panelists like a group of them come in like one day at a time or like at the same day or something yeah, you know, I forget how the panelists work, but yeah, generally, um, so you know, like we had Evander Holyfield on, I believe he was on for one show. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm not sure, I don't think he stuck around for two shows. But yeah, yeah once we got to the point where, once we got to the point where it was like, um, it became a popular show, so maybe season two, uh, we would get these celebs that would come through. And, and frankly, a lot of them would bring their kids. It was their kids that were huge fans of the show. And so, I mean, it was the biggest gift to their kid just for them to get slimed, you know, for them to see their parent getting slimed on Nickelodeon. But it was, I mean, it just was, it was Dr. Dr. J came on the show and our producer, Eileen Braun, was such a huge Dr. J fan that when he was there, she was in tears because this was her childhood dream coming true, getting a chance to see Dr. J. It was, I mean, it was great. It was great. Wow, wow. Yeah, wow, I can wow, just wow. imagine yeah. that. And another another thing, too, is that um, the Orlando Magic was popular there. I remember Penny Hardaway, he was a guest on the show, too. So that was yeah. a huge thing. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, and also, um, like you mentioned, um, the nickname for the audience was the Dog Pound, of course. And I know they would get all excited when um, Danny would flip his hair back. But what was so good about the live studio audience and the tour mm -hmm. going around at the same time, too? What did you love about it? It was the energy, the energy of that live studio audience. And I, I'm telling you, there were times when this set got so messy because <laughs> I think the studio audience would stay there for two shows. Um, and so that the studio audience, the second show, and they're itching to get out into the park and to go ride the ride and do other things. And we have them there, and we have a stu an audio, an audience warm-up person who was hilarious and fun and patient, um, who kept it exciting. But really, our studio audience and the energy they brought, um, I loved it because I, I mean, I actually can't imagine doing that show to nothingness out there. It was a, a really fun group of kids that that just believed in Nickelodeon. You know, it was, they, this was their, it was their jam. This is what they loved. They knew Nickelodeon was their place and they were getting to be a part of it. And then, the, you know, the parents were just the patient ones. 
sitting there with their kids. Yeah, and what I loved about it was the fan interaction because during those two couple, the first two seasons, you would go out into the audience and interview guests and, and have them make a part, may, have them ask what their talent was, what their skills was. Do you remember doing that too? That was a good part. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no, it was great. It was a celebration of everybody. I mean, even when I was, um, because, you know, we would tape the show in Orlando, so we would shoot maybe 46, 47 shows yeah. in our three-week three, three week stretch. Um, and then I would be going back to uh, New York to shoot Inside Stuff. So I'd be walking on the streets of New York, and these kids would come up to me at, like, you know, 5.15 p.m. Mm. Um, when the show would come on at 5.30, and they'd be panicked. Is there no show today? Oh my gosh, I figured out not going to be on. And then I would sort of joke with them in that, no, I have a very, very fast plane that gets me to Orlando in three minutes and 26 seconds. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, their parents were winking at me and I'd be laughing and then they'd say, could you say hello to me on the show today? And I didn't have the heart to tell them, oh, we taped that so long ago. And so I would just have to say, oh, I'm not allowed to because then I'd have to say hello to every kid. But... Uh, you know, you're going to really like today, so make sure and watch it. It was just, it was very sweet. I, I, I mean, I've been very honored and, and have felt privileged to do a lot of the work I've done in television, but Nickelodeon and Figure It Out was a very special place in my heart. I just, I feel very honored that I got to um, be in the lives of such a very cool generation of kids that are now out in the workforce. You know, they're... I meet them at studio meetings where I'm pitching shows and they're making major decisions. Um, I, I meet them at restaurants and they're taking my order and we have this little moment where they, they go back to their 13 or 10 year old self uh, and it's very cute. Yeah, absolutely. It's made such an impact and it's still love today with all the 90s Nickelodeon shows and it's like the splat, of course, that's been airing the episodes recently and how does that make you feel that um, almost like 18 years later the show's still loved? It's, it's special. I, I mean, I, I believe it too. I believe that we really touched, we touched the hearts of that generation of kids. It was a, it was a very special time with Nickelodeon and kids television and the people who were part of it from Albie Hatt and Magda Riolis and Eileen Braun. I just, I, I feel like those people at Nickelodeon really understood the kids they were talking to um, and took the time to understand them. I mean, it was funny because I remember when I was in their offices um, and they knew these adjectives like weird and gross those were good adjectives about a show. I mean, obviously, the worst adjective ever at Nickelodeon was boring. There were kids that thought it was boring. They were like, no, um, but like gross and weird and crazy. That's what they were looking for, you know? Yeah, weird and gross. I'm glad that you said that right now because I wanted to know, like, are there any memorable talents from on the show that stuck out to you the most, like a kid? Like, one that I love was the Etch-A-Sketch, the guy, the guy who did that. He goes on Amazing Portraits. Yeah. I mean, it's amazing, right? I, I, my kids are obsessed with this show, Little Big Shots now, on NBC with Steve Harvey, which I think is just a brilliant show. Um... I love that. It's just celebrating the uh, these amazing prodigies, right? I, I, it makes you just your your jaw your jaw drops at the ability of these young kids have. Um, and there were times when that was the case on on Figured Out, where I couldn't believe they were so good. I mean, Hunter Hayes when he came on, yeah. and uh, I mean, I was blown away by his manners. I remember him being so sweet and so polite. But you look and you're like, I, what? You are doing that and you're that little? That's crazy. Um, but on the other side, the gross side, the grossest thing I ever experienced on Figure It Out was this kid's collection of toe jam. Oh, yeah. I toe jam. <laughs> and it was in a jar. Yeah. And we opened up that jar, and I am not, I can, like, even today when I talk about it, my nose crinkles. The smell of it. I yeah. thought I was going to pass out. It was so disgusting. It was so disgusting. There are no adjectives to describe accurately how disgusting it was. And yeah. so, yeah. 
There, there are some I will never forget for reasons that aren't good. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I can't imagine how long he kept that jar in the first place. Like, oh, oh my goodness, like, oh uh, yeah. Well, he was a little kid. Yeah, so right. it wasn't that long, but it was long enough. Yeah, and it needed to be deposited elsewhere. I'm like, this collection needs to stop ASAP. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this needs to go to like biohazard. Yeah, right, right. And I, would like, I want to know, like, do you remember other shows that were shooting there at the same time that you were filming? Um, no, I don't. That's a great question. Hmm. I don't remember other shows. Like Keenan and Cal, like, was that maybe taping, do you think? I don't think Keenan and Cal was ever shot in Orlando. It I was, think Keenan and Cal was... Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Well, I think when Figure It Out came out, so all that, that all that was shooting in L.A. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. I don't know anything else that was shooting. It doesn't mean there wasn't stuff, but, you know, we would occupy it for a month. Right. Or, you know, the crew probably was there longer, so maybe it was like a month and a half, and others, then others would come in. So when others were in there shooting, I didn't know. Oh, uh, okay. I wasn't really I didn't have that information yeah oh okay but I think the one thing you remember is the two times that you got slimed Summer <laughs> please tell yes. us about those yes. times that you got slimed because they were quite different from each other the first yeah it's the first time I got slimed and they tried to surprise me mm-hmm. um, which would have been an incredible surprise the only problem was is I wasn't standing where I was supposed to be yeah. standing so it was the, I think it was the very end of our first season, last show, and I was saying goodbye, and all of a sudden, all this slime hits the floor right in front of me, mm-hmm. and I look over, and I'm like, are you kidding? You guys were going to slime me? And so then the, I lean in my ear, because I have an IFD, which is a little system where the, the control room can talk to me in my ear, and she's like, we have to do it again. So you have to act surprised. And so the second time around, I knew exactly where I was supposed to stand. And the slime came. I was supposed to be surprised. And I'm going to tell you, it is not hard to pretend that you are surprised when you get pummeled by a bunch of slime. Because it's freezing cold. Because they keep it refrigerated. Um, and it's just slime. So... So yeah, my first time was supposed to be a huge surprise and ended up being a known surprise. Um, and then the second time I was a panelist, I thought I got slimed three times. Did I only get slimed twice? Um, I, I, yeah, I, I think I want to say that twice because, you, like you said, you just you were on the last episode of the first season when, when you got slime, and then when you were a panelist on Lori Bessie, um, you did a secret slime action. And yeah. Was, um, being Summer Sanders, that was a secret slime action, um, coincidentally. So yeah. Yeah. How funny is Lori Beth? She loves that, by the way, because Lori Beth was such a trooper, and obviously Lori Beth, Danny, Amanda Bynes, they were on the show so often. Yeah, they were. So Lori Beth, at towards, like, so now you know we'd shoot three to four shows a day. Whatever the last show was, Lori Beth would do everything she could not to be slimed because mm-hmm. you have to remember, like, they've gone through hair and makeup mm-hmm. so many times, especially if they did get slimed, but it's, it's just exhausting. It sounds like you're pampered by getting your hair washed and your hair blown dry and gussied up again, but it's, it's kind of exhausting at the end of the day. You don't want anybody touching you anymore. Mm-hmm. So uh, the last show, especially a four-show day, she was doing everything she could do. Not to do the secret slime action, not to get slimed. Even if somebody was getting slimed next to her, she'd like move over and put her hat on and guard her hair. Um, so when roles were reversed and I was on the panel and she got to be me, oh my God, I know she was enjoying it, enjoying it, enjoying it. And I, did, and I let her enjoy it to all its glory. I loved that she got to watch me get slimed. Yeah, that was the slimiest episode, and it was so fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. Yeah, 
and you, okay. yeah and Lori Beth and Danny they were Amanda they were always there and they were of course so fun to watch but I think another panelist who I think was also really fun and cracked you up the most was Kevin Coppola <laughs> Kevin he was oh god funny. so funny yeah definitely definitely and um what was oh your- here's the deal if he wasn't he, he wasn't just a, he wasn't like a maniac he had these one liners <laughs> yeah and exactly. he never he never cracked a smile so he had me cracking up I mean, there would be times when I could barely hold it together, especially if it was sports show today, and I was giddy, and we were all ready to get out of there, and we were all hungry and tired, and he'd say something, and I am like, you are the funniest, not funny guy. Like, he just (laughs) throws these things out there, and you look at him, and you're like, but you haven't even cracked a smile, and you're stone cold Kevin Coppola. This is really funny. Yeah, I mean, he's just so unintentionally fine. I'm like, he's he's talented. Like, oh my god, he just he's just quick. Like, I don't know what it is, but he's just like quick with com- comedy. That's what it is. Quick with comedy. That's what he's known for. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and I love to know. Um, just three more questions before we wrap up. Uh, all those four seasons of doing those shows, uh, figure it out, family style, wild style. Do you have like a favorite behind the scenes memory? Yeah, I mean, and there are a few, but we, the show got so popular, and especially the panelists were so popular. We had so many Make-A-Wish kids that Mm -hmm. came through our studios and would hang out behind the scenes in the dressing room. Um, And I just have to say that Danny Tamborelli is probably the sweetest human being because for a, a kid himself, to take so much time and so much energy and to always be positive and happy. He cared about every kid that came through there with his whole heart. Uh, And I just, I always thought that that was so amazing for a kid himself to get it. He just was this bold soul soul, and, and I have to just give credit to his family because he really seemed to be very grounded and understood that he was in a really important position to make a positive impact on a lot of people's lives. And it wasn't just the Make-A-Wish kid, it was the Make-A-Wish kid's family and uh, and siblings that came through that were gonna leave with such joy um, because Danny gave them extra time behind the scenes and all of his energy. That, was, it, that, that by far was the most special for me to be a part of when it was when it was my turn and to witness Danny. Yeah, I think Danny's a good kid because he was also on P and P. Like, I think he just he 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 was doing regular work av- even after his shows ended. He said that himself that he did that, and that's what kept him grounded. And of course, the Make a Wish fit kids are so remarkable to see and be a part of. I must say, and so I'm gl- really glad to hear that. And yeah. and what you're doing right now, um, Speedo USA, um, do you mind talking about that for a little bit? Um, how's that going? Yeah, you're so sweet. I appreciate you bringing in Speedo. Has, uh, I've partnered with Speedo for almost half my life. So they're, for obvious reasons, uh, very close to my heart. But um, I've worn Speedo since I was first in the pool at four years old. Um, and then I had my Lycra Speedo with stars and stripes all over it when I was six, all the way up until I was in college. Um, and then obviously wore my Speedo when I won my gold medal. Now as a mom um, of two young kids, uh, one of them is on swim team, uh, they've, they haven't changed and they've perfectly changed. So uh, they're still, they are still the, the swimsuit you want if you want to go fast. Um, and 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 I'm just so honored that I still get to be a part of it today. So as a, I call myself a social competitor. Um, running may be my heart, but swimming is always my soul, and it just makes me feel good to be in the water. So I'm in the water still now, two to three times a week. It complements everything. It's, it's my original zen. For a lot of people, they have yoga. For me, it's swimming. Mm-hmm. And um, it will forever uh, be what I turn to. I'm just grateful I have it in my back pocket whenever I need it. 
So, yeah, so I still have, I'll be over in Rio. I'll be um, with Yahoo Sports. And obviously I'll get to work with Speedo while I'm there and support all the athletes that are in the pool, my chlorinated crew. Um, and that will be exciting for me as well. Nice. One thing you might not know about me is that I love swimming myself. And every time I go to my grandparents' um, pool in Florida, because they live in Orlando as well, um, I always um, swim and uh-huh. stuff like that. Like, of course, I'm not like I'm not as highly trained as you, but I just love the feeling of in the water. I love getting wet and messy, and I just love um, diving, swimming under. So I really want to learn more about Speedo USA myself. Well, the cool thing is is that Speedo is moving into a bunch of different categories. We have Speedo Fit, which is an actual exercise routine in the pool. It's it's not aqua aerobics. It's... um, We have equipment that you can use. You can run at the bottom of the pool with these weights. You can do some explosive stuff off of the bottom of the pool, pushing off with weights, Mm -hmm. um, working different working different muscles than you would in a normal aquatic situation where you're swimming, um, but with low impact on your joints. And so um, at 43 years young, I recognize that I need that a bit more in my life, that I do want my joints to last for another 40-some. And um, and so you should check that out, Speedo Fit, and you can find that online and, and through Speedo as well. But they're definitely exploring different areas within the aquatic structure, not just hardcore swimming. We want to speak to everyone, even the people who have been, you know, their toes have almost gotten wet in the pool. Ah, oh, but I don't know because I color my hair and should I get my head in the water with the chlorine that that can be bad? We will help you get the right cap. We will help you put that cap on correctly. We will get you the right goggles. We will get you the right suit. We will walk you through everything because our goal is to help people appreciate and love the water as much as we do. Oh, cool. So this is not only for um, intermediate, this is also for beginning swimmers, um, everyone who just wants to get out Absolutely. there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. That's that's a part. Absolutely. I love that. I love that. Yeah. I would definitely yeah. want to get more interested about that. Final question is, um, what do you think made Nick Studios Florida so great and special? I think it was the generation. I think it was you guys, Bilal. I think it was the people who loved our show. Mm. Um, It was a really great relationship. And I'll go back to the people that were running Nickelodeon at that time. And a lot of them are still there. A lot of them are running different networks and have moved on. But it was that creativity and that heart and soul and that connection and relationship with the generation of kids. It was just this perfect relationship. They got each other, they, they um, threw so much creativity into the shows that spoke directly to the imagination and the creativity of the kids through the television. Um, so I, I think that's what made it special. It was, it was just the perfect connection and relationship. I agree with you because it was nicknamed the world's first headquarters for kids and the kids were the ones who made it that special. They were the one who um, guaranteed people to come in the first place. So I'm glad you said that it, the kids helped made it what it was. And before I let you go, Summer, um, did you do one last thing for me? Is that okay? Yeah. Um, it, at the end of every episode, um, when the ending spiel came up, this was your line. Figure it out was recorded in front of a live studio audience in Nickelodeon Studios at Universal Studios Florida. Do you mind saying that one more for, one more time for old time's sake? <laughs> Oh my gosh, I don't know if I can remember it, but I'll try. (laughs) Figure It Out was filmed in front of a live studio audience at Nickelodeon Studios in Universal Studios, Florida. Yay! That's awesome! I'm so (laughs) glad. I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. You said you said it. That's you're one of my favorite people to say that. So because you did it so eloquently well, so I'm glad that you did it again after all these years. Oh, good, 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 good. Bilal, I'm I'm glad we finally made this happen. Thank you so much for your patience and thanks for loving Nickelodeon and figure it out as much as you do. Oh, no problem. Thank you for being such a integral part of this project. Um, I'll be sure to get out to you in no time soon. Thank you so much for doing this. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Have a have a great day. All right. All right. You do the same.